The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Last night, we heard St. Luke's version of the Christmas gospel. This morning, we hear St. John's Christmas gospel. And it's strikingly different. John snatches us right out of the stable, right out of Bethlehem, actually right out of all of creation, and takes us all the way back into eternity. He doesn't contemplate Mary or Joseph, the angels or the shepherds, but only God himself. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Further on, in verse 14, we hear the specifically Christmassy part of the gospel. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Last night, we sang of the birth of this word, Jesus, the Son of God, in words that are taken from St. John. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, born this happy morning. Jesus, to thee be glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing. A word about words in general, and the Word of God in particular. We speak of Holy Scripture as God's Word in written form. Preaching is also God's word in spoken form. These are the words of God because in them God expresses himself, who he is, and what his will is for us. But what does it mean for Jesus to be the word? Well, think about words and how they relate to people. Our words express who we are. And the same is true with God. God expresses himself in the Bible, in sermon, and in his Son. But there is an important difference. Human beings are confined to time and space. Before they speak, they think. Well, they're supposed to. They deliberate and think, and then they convey their thoughts in words. But God doesn't think. God is eternal, and he's all-knowing. He doesn't deliberate before making a decision, because nothing ever occurs to God, and God has never been silent. He is always speaking. He's speaking from eternity, because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit exchange in eternal conversation with one another. When Jesus says then, 
Or rather, when John says that Jesus is the Word, what he means is that Jesus is the exact expression of who God is from eternity. But you know, there seems to be a huge gap between eternity and the realm of mortals like us. How could you possibly ever know the eternal God? Truly know him? Well, here's another way that we're not so different from God. The way you get to know somebody is you sit down with him and you speak with him. And when you do that, you learn who he is. You know his voice, his face, his expression. The same is true with God. The point of interaction, the way in which we have a relationship with him, is through his speaking to us in his word. That's the only way to know God. But remember that John says the word was with God and the word was God. God cannot be separated from his word. God is his word. God's word, then, when we hear it, uh, hearing God's word is not merely receiving information about him, but knowing him as a person. Because the word is the very presence of God. Now, before the birth of the word in Bethlehem, we had plenty of information about God. We know uh, that, uh, that God is incorporeal. That was the word. God is incorporeal. That means he has no physical body. He is immutable. That means he doesn't change. And he is immortal. He cannot die. Now, in light of all of that information, does, does any of that help us to really know God? No. Ironically, the only thing that those attributes of God do is they further hide God from us. Because I change... I have a physical body, and I die. The only thing I know about God is what he isn't. What I need to know about God is who he actually is. Now, since the beginning, human beings have been on a quest to know God, to figure him out. And yet nobody has the ability to do this. No one has the holiness or the intellect or the insight to climb up into heaven and understand the divine. It would seem then that God is unknowable. Now, if I could sit down with God face to face, speak with him, feel his touch, then I would begin to know him even if I can't understand him. God knows that that is what we need, and that is what he has done. For God has taken up his own quest by coming down for us from heaven. And today we celebrate this. The eternal God has a human birth. The judge of all things plays with the ends of his mother's hair. The one who watches over all sleeps in Joseph's lap and in a bed of straw. The Holy One soils his diapers. The light of the world shivers in the cold. The immortal one dies. This is why, to know God, you don't have to search out heaven. You can't reach him anyway. So God comes to you. God is in the manger. God is on the cross. If you want to see God, gaze upon the face of Jesus. If you want to know 
how the Almighty Creator of the universe regards you, then look no further than the place where he was crucified out of love for you. If you want to feel his touch, then taste and see that the Lord is good by eating the flesh of the word and by drinking his blood, which he received from his mother Mary. The mystery of the word made flesh defies words, even the words of preachers. But I would like to leave you with the words of another preacher, St. Augustine. And marveling over this great mystery of the birth of the word, St. Augustine says this, Man's maker was made man, that he, ruler of the stars, might nurse at the breast, that the bread might be hungry, that he, the fountain, might thirst, that he, the light, might sleep, that he, the way, might be wearied by the journey, that he, the truth, might be accused by false witnesses, that he, the judge of the living and the dead, might be brought to trial by a mortal judge, that he, justice, might be condemned by the unjust, that he, discipline, might be scourged with whips. That he, the grape, might be crowned with thorns. That he, the foundation, might be suspended upon a cross. That courage might be weakened. That security might be wounded. That life might die. Do you understand this? that the eternal word, God with us, is born of Mary. That God with us suffers and dies in order that we might live, and that he lives that we might never die. Can you really comprehend it? Well, me neither. But thankfully, this is what God has done when the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we behold His glory. And so, Merry Christmas. Amen.